Hello and happy Friday. Welcome back to another, if I do say so myself, fascinating episode of Fridays Live, which is our week. <laughs> Five I past Fridays. Five I past Fridays, <laughs> I got the name wrong. Uh, which is, uh, I'll get this bit right, our weekly show about family history and all things interesting to family historians. That's right. That is right. So yes, as usual, I'm Alex Cox, your host. Hello. And off camera, the disembodied voice you're hearing is Max Anderton, who's keeping a close eye. Oh, I didn't even give you the chance to say hello there, Max. Sorry. Uh, hello, Max. Hello, Max. <laughs> that joke never witty, gets witty old. never gets, it does. Yeah, it has, it's already officially uh, <laughs> over. I, I promise you I would never do it again. But yeah, apart from making awful jokes, Max will be looking at all the comments that you're sending in. So do get involved. Give us a like. Give us a share. Don't let us do all the talking. Please send your comments in. Just say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. It's a grey, humid, sticky, horrible day in London. So if any of you are watching from sunny and more exotic climes, please do let us know and make us jealous. Well, um, Audrey Collins... Hello, Hi, Audrey. Audrey. <laughs> uh, she missed us last week. She was on holiday. Boo hiss. Where did you go on holiday, Audrey? Tell and, us. W- and was the broadband connection not strong enough to watch us still? Yeah, just because you're on holiday doesn't mean you shouldn't tune in and watch <laughs> us. Um, and then uh, Chris Lang, hi. Hello. Hi, uh, Chris. A cooler and cloudy Staffordshire. Yeah, uh, might not last. Fingers crossed the sun will be out soon. Or are you enjoying the break? It's been rather it's been rather unpleasantly hot recently in England, I think. It has. Without air conditioning in this country, it can get a little bit much. Um, also, hello to Elizabeth Williams and hello to Lindsay Lee Woods. Hello, hello, one and all. And thank you, as always, for joining. And I think you've joined us on quite a good week this week. Uh, we've got two rather exciting announcements, which I'm very much looking forward to share with, sharing with you. You may have already heard about one of them, but... I'll tell you in a second anyway. But before before I do that, um, I wanted to start off by getting you all ready for our question of the week so we can have some fun answers to read out at the end. And our question of the week this week isn't really themed. We just wanted you to share with us some of the common family history mistakes you've made over the years. Things you wish, you know, if you, mistakes you've made that if you feel that you share them with others, it might help them and to avoid these common family history pitfalls. Well, specifically, I wanted silliest ones, actually. Silly, silly are the better. Yeah, the reason being that I posted earlier in the week on Facebook and there were some great responses that came through from that. So that's why I just thought I'd repeat that because some yes. people had some corkers. And I also have a corker, which I'm not sure whether I should share, but I, I, I will. I'll share that when we, when we read out some of the ones you've sent in further further towards the end of the video. Oh, a silly mistake that you've made. A re- well, it was quite a big mistake <laughs> I made, actually. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll be sharing that one. Uh, yeah, well, just before you move on, uh, I just want to say hello to uh, Greg, who's watching from... Oh, it's, it's gone Hi, now. I think, I think it said Switzerland. Uh, Val Tierney is watching from sunny oh, nice. Spain. Julie in Cornwall. Uh, um, and Kenneth Webster has given us a big thumbs up. Thank you, Kenneth. Oh, I love I love it when people are watching in other countries. It feels like we're getting a global audience. Well, it is. It literally it is. is a global audience. Yeah, that's Switzerland, Spain. That's not. That's, that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, before I before I reveal what these exciting announcements are, uh, I just wanted to announce our winner of last week's question of the week, which is Michelle Watson. Congratulations if you're watching Michelle. If you are watching Michelle, um, or if you catch this video later. Drop us a private message on Facebook and we will sort out your prize, which is a month access to find a month of pro access to find my pass. So if you already have a sub, we'll add an extra month on. If you don't have a sub, we'll give you a month to have an explore. And that is also, I forgot to say, that is also the prize for this week's question of the week. Extra incentive for you to share your uh, family history mistakes. Uh, we will, will we be picking one at random or will we pick our favourite, Max? No, we always have to pick them at random. I think it's too... Too subjective. Too subjective otherwise. But um, also, uh, for last week's winner, I will be uh, replying to your comments on the video just so you get a notification because the problem is us being a page and not a person, if we, ah, if we send you a I private see. message, yeah. it goes into that spam folder. So, yes, uh, I will uh, comment to let you know. And, uh, yeah, this <coughs> week, we're just going to, again, we're just going to pick one at random from the comments. But also, I want to get a thumbs up. So, if you give us a like, it's a bit shameless to ask that, isn't That's it? But not. a like and a comment, and we'll pick at random next week, and someone gets a free one-month subscription. Uh, what? A prize. Pro access. A pro access. The best access. Which is everything. But anyway, I, I've, I've, I've spent enough time on admin. So what are these exciting announcements that I teased at? Well, the first one we, we announced yesterday and it's generated a lot of excitement. And to say we're ex- excited about this is a massive understatement. We are incredibly excited. Yesterday we announced that we've entered into a brand new partnership with Living DNA. Yes, we have the world's the world the provider of the world's most advanced DNA testing kit. So we announced this yesterday. Uh, 
and it's generated a lot of excitement on Twitter. Uh, we're really looking forward to working more closely with Living DNA, both being, you know, both of us are British companies. Living DNA are, you know, kind of the, the industry leaders in DNA testing technology. We, we are the industry leaders in British and Irish records. So combining the two makes for a really mm -hmm. powerful combination and we're really looking forward to, you know, working up some new and innovative innovative ways to help people bring their DNA test results to life and really connect with their British and Irish ancestors. Because that's what this partnership is working towards. We're working towards creating a new DNA experience. I can't give too much away now. More announcements will be coming soon, so watch this space. But yeah, we're working towards creating a new DNA experience which is focused on, which is really focused at people who are looking to connect with their British and Irish roots. Because obviously that's where, that's where we really feel we can add some value. Um, um, also, if you want some more information on this, I've just posted a link to, there's a web page which yes. is all about it. And 100%, we, don't, we haven't got a date booked in for you yet, but we will be doing some kind of Facebook Live in the future where we go into yeah. all the details we answer. Because the thing is, DNA throws up so many questions yeah. And that's why it's taken us so long to get into this area of the market because we know that it's it's a complicated thing and we want to make sure we get it right. So we're here to listen to you. We'll be doing a Facebook Live at some point in the future. We definitely will. Where we, we can answer will. all those complicated questions, all the simple questions, any questions you have. Yes, and our, while we're keeping our cl clouds close to our chest in a certain sense, is the fact, and we're not giving too much away, what I can say is that we're aiming to to actually kick off this joint project around late, late autumn this year. So not too distant future. And we will be making uh, further announcements which will be giving, you know, giving more information over the next few months. So yeah, do watch this space. If you want to learn more, please do visit uh, our new joint um, DNA Find, Living DNA Find My Past page. You can read, you know, read all, all the details we're revealing at present there. And also actually off the back of that, off the back of this announcement, we might as well take this as an opportunity to ask you who are watching now, have you taken DNA tests before? Have you tried living DNA? What do you think of DNA testing? Just yeah, just share our share your thoughts with us about genetic family history. Um, oh, by the way, just to interrupt you, I've just seen Michelle Watson has just joined us saying good day all. So Michelle Watson, do you want to give her the Australia. good news? She won the prize. Oh, sorry. So, uh, oh, prize. I, got so, <laughs> <laughs> I got so excited by uh, talking about our new DNA and our living <laughs> DNA partnership announcement. No, uh, so, Michelle, thank you for joining. What you just missed was that you've won, you won last week's question of the week. Uh, so yes, you are the lucky recipient of one month's pro access to Far My Past. So send us a private message and uh, we will sort that out for you. But yeah, thanks for participating and congratulations. We really hope you enjoy it. Um, so yeah, what, for those who have just joined, I basically just shared the happy news that we announced yesterday, our new partnership with Living DNA. We're working towards creating a new British and Irish focused DNA experience that we're hoping to launch towards the end of autumn. We, that's all we're saying for now, but visit the landing page to find out more and let us know what you think. Share your thoughts, because we'd love to hear them. So that was exciting announcement on, uh, number one out of the way. Uh, we, and yeah, we really are really looking forward to this. I think there's some really exciting, cool stuff coming, so do do watch this space. But the second announcement is also incredibly exciting, uh, and that's an announcement we've already made today, in that a whole new county has joined our beloved collection of UK parish records. And you might, you might not have heard, I'm joking when I say this, you might not have heard us say, uh, say this the before, we say it all the time because we're very proud of it. We are the home to, you know, the world's largest online collection of UK parish records. Uh, and that's largely through our amazing, you know, with the partnerships we feel very privileged to have with the Federation of Family History Societies. If anyone from the Federation is watching, thank you guys, you do amazing work. And um, family history wouldn't be in the state it is without you. Um, in the good states, that's what I should say. Family history, UK family history wouldn't be in such a good state without the work done by volunteer groups like the Federation and all the other individual local societies. But yes. Lancashire is the latest county to join our collection of UK parish records. So today we've released baptisms, bands, mar <laughs> baptisms, bands, marriages and burials. Um, and these records come fresh from the Lancashire archives. So they, they're not transcript only. They also include original images, which is what you really want with parish records, because that's where you often get a lot of the bonus additional information. Um, and yeah, so th th they're big collections as well. Um, all of them cover... Oh, well in excess of 100 parishes. So the baptisms collections, 1.1 million records, covering 191 parishes, 
Bums and marriages covers 194 parishes. Burials covers 123 parishes. So yeah, we're really excited about that. If you want to learn more about what is available, visit you know the latest record section of our blog where we list all our weekly weekly releases. Um, but yeah, really pleased to have Lancashire join our family of UK parish records. And um, Lancashire is a county that borders or is very near other counties that we also have very strong record collections for. You know, mm -hmm. so we, our Cheshire collection, our Yorkshire collection, our Staffordshire collection, our Shropshire collection, they're all very nearby. So that whole region now is we've got very good parish coverage for it. So yes, we're very excited about our new Lancashire parish records. <laughs> I, I think Pat Allen's joking, but brilliant comment here. Yorkshire woman shudders at more Lancashire <laughs> records. <laughs> yeah, that is the old, that's the old rivalry, isn't it? Now we have Lancashire and Yorkshire collections. <laughs> the rivalry is fierce. Um, but yeah, that's all I was going to say on the parish records for now. But next I'm going to be showing you a few general tips for searching them. But I did just want to show you one cool find we found. And I think we've got some images to show for this one. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, the, the collection obviously contains quite a lot of illustrious Lancastrians, uh, famous sons and daughters of the county. But the one I found this morning was a man named James Hargreaves. And while you won't have heard of James, you might not have heard of James Hargreaves himself, you would have definitely heard of why he is famous. And he is the inventor of the spinning jenny, which was basically one of the key turning points in the early industrial revolution. <laughs> was that a pun, Alex? What did I say? The key turning points, that's the whole thing. It's uh... I hadn't I it's wish, got A wheel is a main component. I wish I, I wish I was that clever, Max. I'll just no. bring it up on screen so we can see. Uh, gee, get the punch. Yes, this is the, <laughs> the, 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 that was Hargreaves' original design for the spinning Jenny. But yeah, we found him in our baptism records. He, he also had a lot of children. I think he had around 13 children. We found a few of those. But the guy had a very interesting life because he was born, you know, he, he was born very into a poor working class background. He was a hand weaver. He was completely illiterate. And then the story goes that one day, uh, his spinning wheel, his, knocked, his single thread spinning wheel, he knocked it over by accident. And as he got it up to pick it up, he realised that the wheel was still rotating, the, sp the wheel and the spindle were continuing to revolve without him touching it. Uh, and then he, that made him think, he was like, ooh, if we placed a number of spindles side by side, then several threads could be spun at once rather than just doing one and we could make yarn much, much quicker. Um, which was, you know, a, a stroke of genius and this really was and particularly when you consider Lancashire's history of, you know, textile manufacture, it was a huge, huge turning point. Um, so Hargreaves started out small. He uh, produced a tiny number of je jennies, which he only sold to friends. And they were born by, you know, individual weavers who at first loved them. But as the success took over, the price of yarn dropped. And, the, you know, this once highly skilled work was, you know, losing, what's the word? Um, mm. It was becoming less and less valuable. So after a while... It's safe to say that Hargreaves was probably one of the least popular men in Lancashire and ended up having to flee to Nottingham where uh, the, cotton industry, the cotton industry had really benefited from the spinning jenny. So they welcomed him with open arms. So while we have his baptism, we don't have his burial because he was effectively chased out the county for his invention. So yeah, a little bit of history in our new records. Um, so yeah, so as we've added new parish records, I know we talk about parish records all the time, but... They're so important to UK family history research. I thought we'd share, just share a very, very cute few, very few brief tips. Just before you move on, I just want to say hello to a couple of people. Hello to Mandy, who's watching from Lincolnshire. Christine is watching from Yorkshire. And uh, there's a couple of people actually in the comments, but uh, Ruth is, Ruth Fair Mason's the most recent one I can oh, see. Oh, hi Ruth. I know, yeah, I, I, I know Ruth well. Cumberland, Cumberland please. Everyone's asking for Cumberland. Cumberland would be good. Hi, hi Ruth, it's nice to know you're watching. Um, and, and are you going to pass on this request? Yes, no problems. <laughs> hand, on, <laughs> hand on heart. No, I'm good chums with the licensing team, so I'll go down and give Paul Nixon a, a good nudge and say, Cumberland, please, Paul. <laughs> Cumberland. No, I was going to say something silly there. Um, Louise Connolly says hello, and uh, Daryl Hollihan. Hello, hello from everybody. Newfoundland. Well, you've joined me just in time for some amazing parish record search tips. Cause we've just, just in time. Just in time, because we've, uh, we've, we've added a new county, Lancashire, to our collection of parish records, for those of you who've just watched. Super exciting. Um, so I'm sure you all know what parish records are. You know, they, they started off when... Um, Tom Cromwell, Thomas Cromwell and Henry VIII got rid of the Catholic Church and took control and um, started, you know, made a royal decree that every, every life event that passed through the Church of England had to be recorded and sent. Um, that, so, and they're really the best source of family tree 
the information you need to keep your family tree going pre-civil registration in 1837. And because they go all the way back to the 1530s, in theory, if you were lucky enough to have ancestors that stayed pretty much in the same county and stayed in the county where the records are online and there's a, you know, a good number of them have survived, you could effectively get your family tree back to the reign of Henry VIII, which just baffles me. It's amazing when you think about it. Um, so how do you go about searching them? Well, if you're at the point of searching parish records, you've probably already had a bit of experience with civil registration records. So you, could, well, you probably know some of the basics of you know, how to search BMDs. But that, it's still, I, you, know, you can't talk about tips for searching parish records without saying, you know, search baptisms by parents' names, father's last name and mother's maiden name. That's, it's such a, a, a handy trick that most people don't think about doing. Uh, and every single parish record search page, the individual parish record search pages, if you access these collections through our A to Z of record search, will have search options to search by parents' names. So if you search by the father's surname and the mother's maiden name, if they have records for their children, you'll get a nice list of all the, rec all the children born to that marriage. And yeah, it's a great way of build fleshing out that generation on your family tree. My second tip would be if you cannot search, if you're not having any job searching, browse. Pretty much all our parish record collections have browse functions, Lancashire included. And what browsing allows you to do is basically select an individual re register and pour through it page by page, you know, delving through these original documents. And the reason that comes in handy is because, because of the age of some of these documents, you know, they date back to the, to the mid to early 1500s. So as you can imagine, um, legibility and, and you know, the, the, how, the, how, um, how well they've survived, you know, it varies wildly. Some are in appalling condition, you know, some have been very badly water damaged or nibbled on by rats, or it could just be that, you know, the, the archaic handwriting is incredibly difficult to, to decipher. And for that reason, your ancestor's name might not have been transcribed correctly or not even transcribed at all. So to get around that, you know, browsing through individual registers page by page, if you know they were from that parish, is a good way of uh, finding those elusive, hard to find ancestors. But as well as that, it's a great way of getting a better idea of the history of that area, what kind of people were living there and were having children there, were marrying and were dying there as well. Um, Alex, I was busy typing um, something to everyone and so I didn't actually quite hear what you were saying, so did, but Chris has, Chris has commented saying, most parish baptisms, baptisms do not show a mother's maiden name. Is that something that you is, said that they do or is it that some do and some don't? Or? Sorry, some do, some don't. You can, you can. I, I love putting you on the, the spot like that. Backtracking, you, do, you do have the option to search by mother's maiden name on most of, on most of our parish collections, whether maiden name was kept, was written down or not. Okay. Uh, the option is there, um, but still, searching by the name, even if you don't folk build that search around the mother's maiden, maiden name, searching by the names of both parents is still a good way of getting those. But no, that is a very good point, mm. and thank you for picking me up on that. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to let you get away with no, anything. No, you can't. <laughs> and I've only got two more quick points, can we please know? Second <laughs> is one that you all know. Use wildcards. For the same reason as browsing, old-fashioned handwriting, you know, old, old spellings, mistranscriptions, you know, uh, poor quality of, of the original documents. Adding an asterisk when you're not sure about certain letters is a great way of, you know, bringing back more variants of your search. Um, so, for example, if you, uh, if you were searching for, you put M-I asterisk, A-D-D asterisk, that would bring, which is one I tried earlier, it would bring back a combination of things like Michelle Adams, Michael uh, Adams, Millimay Adams, Miss Catherine Adderley. These are all results I got back from doing that. So, <laughs> I was going to say, they were certainly made up after the first no, no, time. <laughs> no, they're not, I promise you, I promise you. But no, uh, wild cards are of, um, of massive benefit. Um, and I guess that kind of... Oh, the only, only other thing is, yeah, be aware of the shift from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. You know, didn't happen until, until 1752. Uh, so any parish records you were viewing before 1752, be aware that uh, the month back then, the, the year started on the 25th of March. The, the calendar was quite different. You will sometimes see notations in earlier records where they'll say like OS or NS for old style dates, new style dates. Um, but still, it's just something to be aware of uh, if you're searching records, uh, parish records earlier than 1752. And my final tip, another can, historical Can one. I add a tip before your final tip? Yeah, of tip. course. Um, if a parish register has gone missing for some reason, check to see if there's a bishop's transcripts available. That is a top tip. That's I a brilliant one. I didn't, I, I've got to admit, I didn't, I didn't come up with that. This is, uh, thank you, De Deborah Hotstock.
Yes, thank you, Deborah Hartstock. God, all these ones I've forgotten about. Which is so, yeah, that bishops transcripts, and we have quite a lot of bishops transcripts on Find My Past. If you want to find them, just press A to Z, uh, search the, our A to Z of record sets, and it'll bring up a list of all the bishops transcripts collections we have. Um, I'm going to give. Can I give one more tip before yeah, you go to your last? This is one. a tip off. Uh, so uh, Chris Lang says, remember that what is recorded is, in parish records is only as reliable as the information given by the couple or parents. Also. Vicars are in the main not local born people and often not familiar with local dialects, therefore lots of spelling variations in names. Oh, I, that's, that's, that's fascinating. That's a really fascinating point. And I, so true, because they'd have been sent off to their various yeah. parishes, wouldn't they? And that's, I haven't actually seen that as a point raised anywhere before. That, wow, that's top fact for the day. Top, Was that from yeah, Chris? Top, top tip of the day, well done, Chris. Thank in you, fact, Chris. We need to start having awards, I think, for things like that. We this. actually do. That, yeah, that's, I, yeah, I'd never considered that. Wow. Right, as of next week, I'm going to come up with some nice kind of like awards <laughs> image that we could come up I don't know, maybe an animation, who knows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be fun to recognise all these amazing tips. And yeah, the last one, very quick, was be aware of the English Civil War, or the Civil War Gap, as I and some others do call it. So obviously between 1642, 1651, England was in flames. Um, you know, uh, lots of churches were abandoned. Taking accurate parish records was not necessarily on the list of people's top priorities when they were fleeing for their lives. Uh, so for that reason, you may hit uh, a gap in records during that period. I've had that same problem myself with my Yorkshire ancestors. I've got all the way back to the Civil War years and they just into the ether, no idea where they are. And I'm assuming it's to do with the turmoil surrounding the Civil War. So yeah, thank, oh, keep those tips coming in, by the way. If you do, because uh, uh, parish records are such an important topic, we're gonna, mm. we'll definitely be re revisiting them in the future. If you've got more tips, like that, those amazing ones we've just had through, please do send them in. Um, and also, I want to have a bit of clarity on the how to win this, 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 well, this week's competition. Yes. I think rather than it being a question of the week related, because I have to take the blame for this, not many people have replied to that question. So obviously- So we're doing a change of tack? Yeah, I obviously came up with a rubbish question. It went well earlier in the week on Facebook, so I thought, yeah, let's do that. But everyone's already told us their silly mistakes. So anyone, any comment on this, that and, and a like of the video, that's all you need to do to be entered into that uh, random prize draw, which we will announce next week. And that's a one month pro subscription or equivalent if you're in the States. Yes. Which is the ultimate British and Irish package, I, do I believe, believe that's that it, is. Yes. That's the correct one, yes. So that's it for my family history tips. Uh, if you join late, the, uh, what you've missed is announcing our fan fascinating, um, fascinating, our fantastic partnership with Living DNA. Uh, I think Max posted a link to the landing page in the comments, yep. so you can follow that link to find out a little bit more information. And we've also added Lancaster, the latest county, uh, Lancashire, not Lancaster, Lancashire, the latest county to join our amazing collection of UK parish records. And if you want to read more about what's available to search, visit the latest records section of our blog. Um, uh, actually, so just as I said, no one's really answering the question, the silly genealogy mistakes. This isn't a mistake made by Nicole herself, but a mistake that she found out about. Her great-great-grandfather was a boy, when he was, he was a boy, but he was put down as a girl. <laughs> so that accidentally... <laughs> well, the reason, the re I was going through the ones that you had sent in earlier in the week. Yeah. And the reason I enjoyed going through them was because pretty much all of them I recognise. And they're like, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. And there's definitely common themes emerging. So I, I actually thought I'd focus on some of the more common ones that everyone's repeating. Okay. Um, and first one from Debbie Jones. Uh, and this is so true. Not talking more to my living relatives while they were still here to answer questions. Everyone says that. And, you know, if you have... If you have older relatives, the time is now, ask them. I mean, I was with three of my grandparents, uh, died before I had the chance to properly quiz them on, uh, my, on, on our family history and what they knew and what they remembered about people. Whereas I was fortunate enough with my granddad that he lived long enough to see me do this job. And, and, and that's when I'd started to get really interested in family history. And it wasn't until I started speaking to other people and everyone was saying, telling to me, if you, you, know, you need to get everything you can out of your grandfather, that I went home and my mum and I sat him in front of a video camera and recorded him talking for about four hours. And I'm so glad I did it. It's stuff I can show my kids if and when I have them. Uh, and it revealed so much stuff that I didn't know, my mum didn't know, and it opened up loads of other doorways. And I think made us closer, so yeah. If you have living relatives out there, don't don't put it off. Um, living relatives who can answer family history questions, don't put it off. Get a video camera or an audio recorder and just talk to them and record it. You will be so glad you did it further down the line. Um, 
So yeah, I give you, there's a couple of comments that came earlier in the video that I've sent over to you. Um, I can just read them out. Well, I've got <laughs> another one here, which is a census one, which is a very easy one, to, uh, a very easy mistake to make. So Glenda Eves said, believing the 1861 age of my great granddad, uh, born in 1835 in Garston, was actually correct. When after uh, after about two years of further digging, I found he was actually born about eight years earlier. Uh, and again, that that goes back to what Chris said. Same with census records and parish, uh, just as with parish. With parish and census, the information is normally only as reliable as the person who submitted it. Uh, you do find people fudging their ages a lot in census records. Um, so yeah, don't take it at face value. I, that's a really good tip. What was the one you wanted to read out, Max? Uh, it was just ones that have come in live while we've been on. Um, back to the DNA, uh, Greg uh, Scowen has said that he's actually taken uh, family tree DNA, ancestry DNA, and 23andMe DNA. Oh, hi, Greg. I think we were emailing this morning. And then he's actually come back and said that he's taken advantage of the free upload facility. Now, this is one of the things that's pretty yes, um, I should unique have mentioned about that. I should have mentioned that. Is that if you've had a test elsewhere, you can upload your results for free to our Living DNA page and you will get the Living DNA analysis and results without paying a penny. Thank you so much, I, for Greg. I would have been a kicking myself if we hadn't mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, that do do that. That's our call to action now. If you've already taken a test, upload it for free. Uh, you won't regret it. Uh, another one from Richard John. Uh, Aylcock, who said, not backing up my findings. I had a badly timed power cut years past and it wiped my PC. Um, you know, it, whether your PC gets lost, you lose your laptop, you know, there's a, you know, some act of God, there's a fire, flood, it can happen. Uh, so I, yeah, I can only echo that. Back, back stuff up, keep your, keep your findings in, not just in one place, maybe download it to a USB and keep that somewhere safe, give it to a family member. Or even better, lock it in a safe and bury you, it. Well, I was going to say even better, which is a bit cheeky. Put it on your Find My Past family tree. Safe place. Well, 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 yeah, it is safe, but you never know. There might be earthquakes in all the locations that our servers are. Why not have it? Dundee is known for earthquakes. Dundee isn't it? is yeah. on a massive fault line, from yeah. what I hear. Uh, no, do back up your findings there, because if you, yeah, particularly for people who've been doing it for so long and they've got trees containing thousands of names, I can only imagine the horror you must feel at realizing that, that all that hard work and information is gone. Should we call it a day, Alex? I think so. Yeah, I think we've, we've there's loads, there's, I mean, we've had so many great ones through. If people would like to see more of these family history mistakes, go further down our timeline. And there's, there's uh, I think you posted it on Monday or Tuesday, and there's loads in there. So if you want, if you want to learn more about those, uh, yeah, check that out. And the last thing I was going to say was, because we haven't even mentioned it, Lee Max episode of Who Do You Think You Are on Monday was fantastic. It's not too late to pop in the comments what you thought of Lee's episode. I thoroughly, really enjoyed it because it focused on World War I research, which is one of my favourite areas. But it was also great for Find My Past Records because pretty much everything he used is available on our site. And if you are curious about the resources he used that you can use through us, uh, I wrote a blog post on Monday. Well, it's more of a directory to the records Lee uses, um, which Max will post to in the comments. I've just done it. One step ahead of you. What You beat me. Well, um, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah, thank you I so much. I hope you're excited as we are about Lancashire Parish Records and the New Living DNA Partnership. Um, and have fantastic weekends. Yeah, bloody weekends. And also, uh, watch this space for, we've got some exciting uh, Find My Past Fridays lined up for you in future. Yes, we do. We do. Uh, including, we are listening to your requests. We've had lots of requests for Scottish um, genealogy um, related episode. Yes. And we are getting one of our very own in-house experts. And that will be in the next couple of weeks. TBC. T yeah, watch this space. It's going to be good. <laughs> so, to be said, confirmed. But it's confirmed that it's happening. The date is TBC. You know. Anyway, right. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, I messed bye, up everybody. The, I messed up your <laughs> slick ending, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Um, okay. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for everything you've sent in. Uh, we hope we see you again next week and have lovely, lovely weekends. Cool. Bye. Bye-bye.